Welcome back to another video. We're going to take a look at the current state of CSM. So this is a generative AI platform. We see that we have the possibility to use various creation tools. So we can use image to 3D, AI word renderer, a real time sketch to 3D, high resolution text to image. We can also style as character and the case study presented within this video will be regarding a, a character. And we can also animate those. I will go over here within the showcase to see some of the um, editor pick models. And for the character, the case study will be regarding this one. As we see, this uh, gradator character, um, and within the reference, uh, we have uh, the head of um, of a dog. We see the 3D model within the viewport. This is the final mesh, which was created at a high resolution. We can also change the mesh topology. If you want, we can go with triangles or we can go with quads. If you want to check the wireframe of the model, we can do that now within the new uh, viewer over here. So as you can see, this is the topology of the mesh. We can also see the default color, which is this one. We can see the geometry or we can see also the normals over here. And within the creation um, stage, we can also define the polygon count. For this model, we see that this was set to high. And we also have the text resolution, in this case set to 2048. Regarding the file format, we can go for OBJ, GLB, USDZ, and we also have FBX over here. I will download the original file over here, which is this one, to see exactly what uh, was the image used as the input. So this is the starting point for this character, and based on that, we have this model generated over here. Now, some of the nice features of the application is that we have the possibility to retexture this using AI, and we're going to see that Within the retexture with AI, we can also have the possibility to do some changes. For example, we have a model over here. So as you can see, we have an input at the bottom. This is currently um, set like this. So I will change this. Let's say, make the head of the gladiator um, to look like a cat. And we're going to see that the AI will generate some uh, prompts over here. We can also increase the uh, inference over here. So this will increase the refinement. We can also change the strength and this will increase the accuracy. And we can also generate various random seeds using this button over here. And at the end, we can have this upscaled and we can have this send now, since I, um, I increase the accuracy over here, we see how far this will go from the original one. So I will just um, decrease the strength of, and we're going to see that it will still match the same style. So keep that in mind when you are working with this tool. And if I will go back over here, so that was regarding retexturing. If you're going to go for retexturing, you will have to go within uh, the preview mesh, the final mesh, so that the 3D model will be recreated. And we can also go within the animate with AI. As we can see over here, for um, humanoid 3D models, it is highly recommended that we're going to choose a good, um, a good pose, for example, a T-pose. We're going to confirm that the selected model is within the let's say the recommended pose. This will now import the model. This will take, let's say, um, several, um, in some cases, even one or two minutes, how the platform is currently set up. But I already have this open over here. So let me just uh, search exactly. So over here, we see that uh, we can add custom animations over here. We have some predefined animation, for example, um, like this one, so the current animation um, that we have, which is angry point. If I will add, for example, jump, 
we're going to see that the platform will add the jump animation. And one of the nice features is that we can easily export this. So this will export it as a JBL. A GLB, sorry. And over here I have that mesh imported. So this is the, um, the angry point. We're going to take a look within the timeline. And I will import the one that we just generated. So within the downloads, we're going to find the following one, which is this one. So jump. Those two models will be perfectly overlapped. So I will just move it over here to the side. I will hide the, the armatures. If I press space, we're going to see that we have the um, jumping animation and we also have the other one. So we see how easily we can uh, we can create those. There are some other animations within the library. For example, we're going to have um, run. Some of the animations are not that fine-tuned. As you can see, the run animation is quite, uh, quite goofy on this character. But what is interesting is that we have the possibility to use animation prompt over here. So as you can see, an example, a person does uh, jumping jacks. So let's try uh, some of those. And I will hit animate mesh and this will start uh, creating those. We see that the animation generation has started, which will be this one. It's currently still processing. So while this is um, still under, uh, under work, we're going to check some, um, some of the features over here. We see that um, this also loaded. So this is the first step after I closed, I, I click on that typos. So we see over here that the application did a great job since the character was within the, the typos. We have the head, we have the nose, we have the neck, we have the shoulders and all of those. If you want to, you can also um, change the location of this. For example, maybe the nose will be over here since this is a dog character. And afterwards, we can click next and this will take us to the um, animation library, which is the same uh, viewport as the one uh, we saw over here. So we see that the person does uh, jumping jacks has been loaded and we can easily check that. And again, we can have that easily exported. We can take that within Blender, file import, this will have the same format, so uh, GLB. I'll just go to the bottom and this will be jumping jacks. And I will move the character over here. And one of the main advantage is that this will have a uh, character size consistency. So you're going to see the character uh, will remain the same, even though the animation in this case for um, over here, let's say, for the back of the character is not that fine defined. Uh, for the jumping animation, but we see that the other two are more, more than, uh, let's say, decent and usable. Okay, so this was the update. I'm really curious what's your opinion regarding uh, CSM platform. Also, if you decided to give it a try, I will position a similar video over here on the left side. I will add um, my AI tool playlist to the top and I will also add a subscribe button to the right. So that's it. Thanks for watching.